Greetings Accounting 102 students. Focus of this video is going to be trading securities. This will be a form of investment. So this is going to be an asset to our fictitious corporations. Yeah? In some cases we'd be buying stocks, in other cases bonds. Now stocks would be considered equity securities and bonds, now you're buying bonds as opposed to selling them, which we have done previously, that's also going to be an investment. All right, now how to, what characterizes a trading security? These would be securities that we purchased for the short term. Uh, we probably buying and selling all the time, possibly on a daily basis. What are we trying to do? We're trying to make a few extra dollars on idle cash that we have. So we're looking for short term share appreciation and maybe a little bit of interest from bonds okay now our immediate focus of this particular lesson is going to be equity securities so we'll be buying stocks and selling stocks they'll be in this portfolio of trading securities because of the frequency of trading so we're buying and selling all the time okay so this is a very current asset yeah and to the extent that the amount we paid for these securities differs from what the fair value of these securities are at any balance sheet date is going to go into a special account, which I call securities fair value adjustment account. So what this account is gonna represent is the difference between what you paid for the securities versus what their fair value is at a particular balance sheet date. And we're gonna illustrate that just in case that didn't make any sense to you. Um, so we're gonna have unrealized gains and losses when we compare our fair value to our cost. Now unrealized means you, you didn't cash out. It's on paper. You're ahead of the game on paper or you're behind on paper. You didn't sell the stock. Whereas a realized gain, what does that mean? That means you've actually sold the stock and you've collected some cash, realized. Okay. So that's the general idea, very current asset, and we're gonna to have to adjust the fair value. All right, so let's look at a numerical example to see how this thing works. We have here Zeneb Zucchini, all right? Uh, and Zeneb has four securities that she has acquired at some time in the past, and this is what they cost. Rigatoni, Capolini, Ditali, and Accini Di Pepe. Okay? That's how much she paid for these. So, when did this happen? Well, sometime prior to November 30th, 2020. All right. That's what's in the portfolio. We're going to have two accounts. One account, and I call it trading securities. Um, textbooks might call it something else. I like to call it trading securities because it's very obvious what we're talking about. All right, as opposed to just saying equity securities, and then you have to figure out kind of what account we're talking about. All right, so the balance in this account, trading securities, is going to be equal to the cost paid for the securities. And the cost in Zeneb's portfolio is 358800 So that would be the balance at the beginning of the month, beginning of December in this case. Now, According to letter A below, let me change this date because we've got to adjust this account. According to letter A below, there's a balance in the securities fair value adjustment account. The balance is 3900 so I installed that over here. So there's our two accounts. This one is going to have the cost of the securities. This account will be the difference between the cost of the securities and the fair value at any given point in time. The combination of these two accounts, when you put them together, must equal the fair value of the securities. Now, if you look at this right now, is this true? So if we take this debit balance and this debit balance and add them together, now, when you have a debit balance in the securities fair value adjustment account, that means that you are ahead of the game on paper. That means your fair value is greater than the cost. If we add the two together, we get $362,700. Okay, 
what is the fair value? The fair value is $365,000. So we have to adjust this balance to make the balances when added together equal to 365. So what do we need? What do we have to do to make that happen? All right, what's the difference between these two? The difference is $6,200. And we are at $6,200 to the good, right? We're ahead of the game here. Our fair value is greater than our cost. So we want to have a debit balance in this account equal to $6,200. Well, you don't just install it like I just did. You have to make a journal entry, yeah? So what's the difference between these two numbers? 2300 So we need a debit for $2,300 to this account, Securities Fair Value Adjustment. So let me go ahead and do that. This is a balance sheet account, securities fair value adjustment. So typically what's gonna happen is you're gonna combine these two and on the balance sheet, you're gonna say trading securities at fair value, okay? So what do we wanna do here? We want to debit the account for 2,300, yeah? That'd be our adjusting entry on November 30th, okay? And what are we gonna credit? got to credit something, right? Unrealized gain or loss. Okay. In this case, it's a gain, yeah? And it's $2,300. Where does this account go? This account goes on the income statement. Even though you didn't sell the stock, this $2,300 gain is going to go on the income statement. Where does this one go? This is on the balance sheet. Yeah. Again, we combine these two accounts. And now they're equal to what? If we add the two account balances together, we're not going to be surprised at the total, right? The total is 365000 Balance is 6200 So we're good to go into now the month of December, where in this little problema, we're going to be recording purchases and sales. All right, so first, December 2nd, we sell 700 shares of Richard Rigatoni for $38,500. So you want to debit your favorite account. What's our favorite account? Cash, of course. We debit our favorite account for $38,500. Then we say to ourselves, self, how much should we pay for the Rigatoni stock? So you go back to this over here, and you look at that, and you say, well, it looks like $60,000 divided by $1,000. That looks like $60 a share, yeah? So I'm going to credit trading securities for $60 a share. Well, how many shares did I sell? I sold 700 shares. $42,000. All right. So once again, where did we get the $60 from? By dividing. Okay. Now, the debits don't equal the credits. This is disturbing and potentially dangerous to your psychological well-being. So we need a debit, right? I'm going to call it realized loss. Probably nobody would do that, but just so we know. Realized loss on trading security, and that's definitely going on your income statement. That's real. How much did we lose? We took a $3,500 haircut. We paid $42,000 for those securities. We sold them for $38,500. We lost $3,500 on the deal. Yeah, yeah. Now, just another little pointer. When you buy securities, like when we bought Richard Rigatoni sometime in the past, 
that 60000 would include any brokerage fees. So the cost is equal to whatever you paid for the stocks plus any broker fees. And when you sell securities, this 38.5 here, that would be net of the broker securities. So broker securities are, uh, broker commissions, I should say, are, are added to the cost when you buy and deducted from the proceeds when you sell. There's no separate account for them. Okay, so it's combined in the cost and is combined when you sell. All right, where are we? Now we're up to December 8th. What happened on December 8th? We sold Damien's Detali for $44,000. We sold how many shares? 500 shares. Okay, so again, we're going to need to know how much we paid for them. So that looks like that's going to be 120000 divided by 1500 We paid $80 a share. That's what we paid for these. All right, let's come over here, put our entry together. Debit our favorite account, which is what? Cash. How much is the cash? Cash is 44000 All right, we want to credit trading securities at a multiple of $80. So that's going to be 80 times, how many securities did we sell? 500. 40,000. We just sold securities that cost us 40,000 at 44,000. And we are what? We are happy as hell, right? So that's going to be a realized gain. And that's going on your income statement, right? Trading securities. And the difference is obviously $4,000. All right. So there's our two cells. And keep in mind, whenever you sell stock, you have to refer back to the cost, which for the Rigatoni was $60 a share. And for the Detali was, what, $80 a share. Next on the hit parade, what happened? December 18th, we purchased Selena Semolina, okay, 38,000. That's pretty straightforward because there's no, there's not gonna be any gains or losses when you buy something, right? So you debit trading securities for whatever you paid, yeah? How much did we pay? We paid $38,000. And we credit cash, $38,000. That becomes part of our portfolio now, yeah? This is the uh, Semolina. Okay, next on the head parade, December 24th, we're gonna purchase Carmita's Capolini. 51,000, same exact entry, Devin credit was, right? Except now it's what? 51,000. are four during the month transactions, purchases and sales. Sales will always have a gain or a loss attached to them, yeah? And when you buy, there's no gain or loss, but we've now established the cost basis for those securities. So we get to the end of the month, in this case, December, and Here's our information with respect to fair value. So we look up the fair value of these stocks. Yeah, in the old days, you used to have to look it up in the newspaper. Now you just go online. And this is what our Rigatoni stock is worth, 21.6. The observant student will note, we had 1,000. We sold 700. We have 300 left. 
for Carmita, we had 900, we bought 500, now we have 1,400. Now, where does this number come from? This, well, that's the fair value, yeah. And Damien, we bought 1,000. We had 1, 1,500 shares. We sold 500. We got 1,000 left. Nothing happened with the uh, Jimmy DePepe. And then Selena Sema, Semolina, what happened? We bought 400 shares. So this is, this is all given. That has to be given. All right. Now what? Okay, I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to construct a portfolio of these securities, including the cost. So I'm going to come down over here. Now, what about the Richard Rigatoni? That was $60 a share, right? So that's $18,000. Carmita Capellini, got to do a little addition here. We had shares at the beginning of the month that cost what? $100,800. And then we bought some more. So we add those two together to get the cost of the, should be 1,400 shares at the end of the month, yeah? 900 plus 500. So there's our 1,400 shares. Damien, what happened with Damien? We got 1,000 shares left. And how much did they cost? Those were $80 a share, I believe, yeah? a share. We got a thousand left. So let's do that. Nothing happened with the Achini de Pepe. So the cost at the beginning of the month is equal to the cost at the end of the month. And that cost is 78,000. And then there's the Selena stock we bought, which is right here. That's the 38,000. So our cost numbers calculated come out to 365,800. And the fair value is 386,200. So we're ahead of the game by 20,400. Okay. Now what? Um, we want the balance in the securities fair value adjustment account to be equal to 20,400 and it's got to be a debit balance, yeah? Okay, so let's see. Come back over here. This is where we finished up after we made our November 30th entry. Now we're gonna make a December 31st adjusting entry, yeah? We want the balance to be 20,000 400. So how are we going to get there? Now we're going to find the difference again. What's the difference? Fourteen thousand two hundred. That's going to be our adjusting journal entry. It's going to be a debit. Securities fair value adjustment account. I'm just going to copy this entry from up here because it goes the same way. And a credit to the unrealized gain account, which again goes on the income statement. Now, we're basically done, but I'm going to show you another little thing here. This cost number. That should be equal to the balance in the trading securities account. Yeah, yeah? We said that's what goes in that account, the cost. So let's do this. Let's see what the balance in this account is going to be. We sold what? Rigatoni that cost us 42000 We sold Detali that cost us 40000 We bought the Selena stock for 38000 and we bought the 
rate to stock to 51,000. And the observant student will note that the ending balance of 365,800 is equal to our calculated balance down here, 365,800. And another little word to the wise here. Um, this one went, everything was positive. Okay? She started out with a debit balance and we made the debit balance larger both times. Yeah? Okay, what if things took a turn for the worse and let's say hypothetically that this stock here that cost us $365,800 was only worth $360,000. So let's just play make-believe for a second. If that was the case, if the fair value was $360,000, we'd be losing money on paper, yeah? How much would we be losing? We'd be losing $5,800, in which case we would want to have a credit in this account of 5800 How do you go from a $6,200 debit to a $5,800 credit? Well, in that case, you have to add the two together. You need $6,200 credit just to get back to zero, and then you need another 5800 to get to the balance you want. So that would be a $12,000 adjustment. When you flip from a debit to a credit balance in this account, you have to add them together. If you flip from a credit balance to a debit balance, you have to add them together. Okay, it didn't come into play in this problem, but I do believe it comes into play in the trading HW problem, which is also going to be attached to this uh, update. Let me go back to the investments for a second. Okay, so what did we just do? We were just doing this thing here, trading securities. And we said, what, if you, if you are ahead of the game on paper, you're going to record an unrealized gain or loss, which is going to go on the income statement. You're not going to pay tax on that if you have a gain. We're not going to get a deduction if you have a loss. But it's going to show up on the income statement anyway. All right. Now, what if you had the very same securities, but you didn't intend to buy or sell that frequently? Okay. Well, then you have available for sale securities. It's also an asset account. And everything about the available for sale securities and the trading securities is identical, except for one thing, the name of the account probably, and the unrealized gains or losses. Okay, the same ones that I repeated several times go on the income statement if it's a trading security. They do not go on the income statement. They're not a component of net income. It shows up as a separate component of stockholders' equity. So if, let's say, we had this deal going on, this $3,900 is still gonna be in this account because you're still gonna have security fair value adjustment, but the other side is going to show up in stockholders' equity. There'd be a $3,900 credit balance in stockholders' equity. And remember, stockholders' equity, generally speaking, you're going to have credit balances. So if you have a $3,900 credit balance, you'd be adding that to your stockholders' equity. So both numbers show up on your balance sheet. One shows up where? In this account, the adjustment account, and the other one shows up in stockholders' equity. Nothing goes to net income um, for available for sale security. So that's the only difference other than the fact that maybe you use a different account title over here. All right, that's how that works. So if you can do the, if you can handle the trading securities, well, then you can handle available for sale securities. And one other thing about these available for sale, if you're planning to dispose of these securities within a year, they're going to be a current asset. If you're planning on holding them for a period of time greater than a year, then it's going to go into 
investment section on your balance sheet. And when anything that goes in the investment section on your balance sheet, it's going to be long term. And that has everything to do with what? The intention of management. Okay. That's how it works. And I attached a little problema for you to work on, similar to the one we just did. And hopefully you can have some fun with that. I'm going to do a separate screen video for health and insurance security.